Hello lads and ladies and welcome back for another video. Today we're doing something, you know, similar that we've done on this channel before. On this channel, this is the home of your Skybet League One content. Whether it be tier list, whether it be the latest news, the League One Live, it is your home of League One content for this season and next season, whatever happens with our beloved Fleetwood Town. So again, get subscribed if you want all the latest League One content. We're on the road to 14,000 subscribers. Today, me and Jake decided to sit down, do a tier list in depth of every supporter, fan base in Skybet League One and rank them from the bottom to the very top as well. So um, let us know your thoughts down below. Give us your tier list if you want to as well. Enjoy the video. But yes, it's nice to be... Um... Nice to be on the channel for, for for not a live stream. Nice to be here for the um, members only content. So it's not hello. members only. It's, on. it's not members uh, only. Oh, this is, is for not? everyone. Oh, but, you, you but where can they go if they want to find my extra content? Our extra I don't, content. I, I don't know, Ben, because I, you, you tried to get me to sign up, and I did sign up, and ultimately it took me about half an hour. But Dan, there's link below. Here, link below. We've um we've uploaded a few um. Videos on Skybet League One. By the time you've seen this, there's already three pieces of content out there worth over 45 minutes worth of content. And if you fancy a little, uh, a little nosy, go and go and join below. Thank you to the 32 people I think that have subscribed in the first couple of, we of weeks of it being being published. Jake, how are we, mate? What are we doing tonight then? Do you want to uh, explain what you've done at home with the tier list? I'm going to bring up yes. now. So let me show you. So Ben asked me to to put together a, a tier list. Um, told me we were ranking all the supporters of all the clubs in Skybet League One. So what I've done is I've uh, essentially just used the tier, uh, tier list guide, um, but changed the category. So starting down the bottom, we've got you could have come in a taxi. That's uh, for supporters that that perhaps aren't great. A level up, sorry who? Up from there, they were there. Uh, up from there, you've got decent noise, and then at the top, you've got elite fans. And you can see down the bottom, we've got the clubs in Skybet League One in the current order of the table. So we're working towards those big clubs right at the end, just to make sure that they uh, they stay for the duration of the video nappers. The big six, uh, not really, mate, because there is, there is a there is a big club outside the top six at this minute in time. But yeah, Steve, they'll be there when it matters. Stevenage. Do we start? Yes, mate. We, we can start with Carlisle if you like. Carlisle United. Then let's let's go. For mm. me, um, they are very well supported for you know where the base in the country. You know, yeah. Obviously, it's quite a big place as well. We, but in terms of numbers, what they get at home, it's between five and eight normally. I think they got ten on the opening day. Um, mm -hmm. We are well supported at home. I think the atmosphere is poor, if I'm honest with you. Like there's effort there, kind of mid-tier, away from home. The the made a, there, was a, there was a number of them, but I didn't really hear them. That's what I'd say. I know you've not been to Brunton Park yet this season. You've still got to go You know, in mm. what, a couple of weeks' time. I've watched yeah. them twice against Orient Fleetwood. Um, and then, obviously, they've come to our place. I just think maybe, for me, they were there. The middle, top of me, like they were decent at times, but I don't think quite decent enough to, to make decent noise. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like you say, Ben, we go to Carlisle on on Easter Monday, so I don't know when you're planning on on, on having this out, but that, that's in a, in you know in the next ten days or so. So looking forward to going there. It's a, a ground tick for me. Um, but away from home, I thought they were good. It was we played them, Ben. Remember they had that good start near. Um, Right at the at the start of September, they were they were picking up points consistently, like draws and Wigan, Stevenage. Around when they beat when they beat, I think it was just before they beat Bolton as well. Um, yeah. it, before that international break, we played them, and do you know, I thought their their fans travelled decent. I mean, like, every time that we have played Carlisle, from what I can remember, even in League Two, I thought their fans were pretty good. Um, you know, I, I think you got to compare it to. Your distance as well that they travel. They're coming from yeah, pretty much take the good of the country. Yeah, you, you got to think about it. on top of where you come from, Ben Fleetwood, where we say, "Oh, the fans are really good for traveling all that way down." So Carlisle's what another half an hour, forty-five minutes on on top of further north than where you are. 
So I agree with you, Ben. I, I, I think we should go in, in, in they were there. I think that's a, a, a decent category for Carlisle. Yeah. Next up, Port Vale. Ooh. Again, similar to Carlisle in terms of between maybe a bit smaller, between four and seven, four and eight thousand. Um, I yeah. think they're slightly louder at home. Again, they were louder than Carlisle were at Fleetwood and they lost the game. Um, again, I'd probably push in. I don't think you can rank them higher than Carlisle, though, if I'm honest with you. I think probably the same. That I like them as a football club. Um, good numbers, you know, for where they are in the country as well. They've got big city mm. clubs, you know, in Stoke next to them as well. What are you thinking? Yeah, yeah, Carl, uh, Carl, Port Vale are a weird one because I, I think they travel really well and that Super Vale away chant they do is always pretty good. Um, however, obviously, and this is because of what's going on at the pitch at the moment, you'll see the the home the home fan, number of fans and atmosphere completely change in the Vale Park. And obviously, we've been Napa as well. They've been on this really poor run. I was really unimpressed with Port Vale fans at, at Vale Park. Admittedly, obviously the, the second bottom in the league and they're not playing great football it doesn't give you a great out to cheer for all. but yeah I've not been impressed with Port Vale fans I I would if I think if we're going to put them in a category I think they're right at the bottom of they were there yeah um, agree. But, and I agree and I, I think there are circumstances around that when Port Vale gets bouncing as pretty much of every club I think you could easily see a case of them being up here but because of the the, the football at the moment I think we're going to have to slot them there yeah, I think I have to agree there. Next yeah. up, my beloved, I'm not going to beat around the bush, Fleetwood Town. One thing, we are going in the bottom, by the way. I'm not having... Are you sure? Fleetwood, Ta- Fleetwood Town are there. Fleetwood's population is 25,000. You look through those clubs and we could fit inside Redden's ground pretty much. We could fit in Charlton's ground. You could fit in pretty much get into Wigan's ground. Um you could get into Barnsley's ground near enough as well. You know, you know, maybe you know, have a few, you know, a few left over. Bolton's you could get into Derby and Port. So I've just named five or six there that we could get into. We're a non-league mm-hmm. football club. Um, you know, that's luckily had a bit of investment put behind us. Um, the infrastructure at Fleetwood is great, you know, in terms of training ground, but in terms of size of club, I think for numbers, I think to have a you know, 10% of our population at games, you know, you look at I look at it, I don't think many will have higher than us in um Scarbet League One. Um, so I think that's good in terms of away. I think I get another 10% of our away support go to away games as well. You know, you take away the attendance to then away fans, you're looking at two and a half thousand average, 1,600 season ticket holders. Look, we, we should have come, we could have come in a taxi. And I think that, you know, we live and die by that song. So for me, we're going into the bottom. What about you, Jake? Uh, you see, Nappers, I, I, I completely disagree. I think Fleetwood fans are class. Um, they may not be there in numbers and they may get the mick taken out of them. Um, it's not all based you... on numbers. No, uh, and, when, and when you see pictures of the Fleetwood away, I and mean, then you look at the comments that followed briefly, you're like, "Oh, well, that, that's horrific support." I think you've got to you've got to base the support on the people that actually go, rather than the people that don't go. And yeah. Fleetwood, even though even though you're a small club and you're small in numbers, I think you boys travel pretty well. I, I've been really impressed with the, the noise that you were made at Central Bank, even though everything that that seemed to go against you. Um, all the vlogs that I've seen you in Napa's, whether you do it on purpose to make it seem like a better atmosphere by recording all the chants. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna put Fleetwood in the bottom category. For me, I Ben, think... uh, and, and I know you you might just, I wanna I really want to put Fleetwood in elite fans. I think you bought I think you lot are, are fantastic <laughs> in term, in terms of the distance you travel. Numbers aren't great, but it's not all about numbers. <laughs> I think you it's not the I size think you counts. Hey? It's not the size that counts. Um, it's not the size look, that counts. I, I wonder I'll, I'll, say, I'll compromise with you. Got to I'll remember, compromise hey, with there's going to be comments put, here. I'm not putting it in the top. I'm not putting it in the top. I put, I put it on the thumbnail just to wind someone up. But Can look, we put them here? You've got to judge it on I the number you, as well. right? I, and I do okay. think it can. If you, ask, if you ask some away fans this year, we've probably made more noise. Exeter said we're the best fans. Some of their fans said we're the best fans that have gone and there was 100 of us, right? Compare us to Burton. Burton are in the middle of the country. Burton have half the miles we Way travel better, and take better. similar numbers. We're not the, yeah. probably the smallest club in this division in terms of numbers. In terms of noise, we are, I'd say, for the number that we take, we're probably up there. I'd push us 
sorry who at the absolute All right, we'll go most. Sorry who. I mean, I, I, I back down on my argument, but I, I think Fleetwood Cla- fans are class, mate. I, I, I for like for the numbers, that. I agree. I mean, it's not all about numbers. I think we've got to kind of, you know, say that. I think we need to judge them on the amount that we take as well. But the numbers have to be, you know, tolerated as well. So, yeah. um, people can't Moving on. you know. Cheltenham, where are you at with Cheltenham, the Robins? I like the home. I like the home fans, but I really don't. Yeah, like in their that away corner. Fans. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, Matty gets it, puts it across really well in his um his videos. That little corner is 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 a is a, a little a little bundle of atmosphere. Um, Cheltenham as well. I the the away fans they left a lot to be desired when they came to. I think I'm sort of sticking them in this category of sorry who, but behind yeah. Fleetwood. Agree. I don't. Um, next up, Cambridge United. Um. Mm. I really like the home fans, you know. Um, you know, when they get going, you know, and you know, and they sing, you know, um, you know, about the team and get behind them, they're very loud. And probably one of the best sets of supporters we put them in the park side and we made them kind of split the fans again into the terrace and the seating because of the atmosphere they created. I'd potentially yeah. go they were there to, to decent. I'd say they were there top of that, Jake. I yeah, really I mean, we, we I didn't go to Cambridge away this year because it was on a Tuesday night and I couldn't get it off work. Um, but we played them obviously a couple, yeah, last week. Obviously, the, the, the scoreline beating them 6 0 didn't, didn't help their uh, their fans stick around. But yeah, I think when they get when they're getting behind that terrace behind the goal, um, uh, yeah, and I, I also think that the, the future for Cambridge supporters is looking a lot better. I think they're going to look to redevelop the Abbey Stadium as well, which will help the match day experience. And you'd hope bring in more numbers and they can sustain it around a six, seven, eight, maybe thousand uh, weekly capacity. But I, I think we're going to put them in uh, this this part of the uh, the tier list. Okay, next up, Burton Albion. Um, well, there's only where, one place. The same size as Fleetwood. In, in, in home fans, I think they're quiet than Fleetwood. Aren't they? Very quiet at home. Away, they make a you know make a noise, and you know they are very similar to Fleetwood and respect them as a football club, and yeah. you know probably a bit smaller than Fleetwood in terms of of that. Um, I probably I think Ben, this is this is the first entry into the bottom category here. They don't travel well, like you said. The they, you've got Atmosphere to remember there. they are in the middle of the country compared to Fleetwood, and they're taking yeah, similar numbers I mean. as well. And, and Fleetwood are louder for the, for the numbers, I reckon. Yeah, and I, I think Burton are quite quiet for the numbers, and, and that's not a, a jib because obviously they've done very well to get to the level that they are, and they've even been higher than where they are now. Um, but the, the supporters, I mean, I, I obviously when I was at Union Derby, we got to cover a lot of Burton, and you never spoke about the atmosphere at Burton. It was always about the hardworking players on the pitch or or Nigel Clough. It was never wow, what an atmosphere at the Pirelli. They they can get it going. Um, absolutely no doubt, as everybody can. But for me, Ben, they could have come in a taxi. Um, I think we've got um, our first into elite fans here. And I want to suggest an argument over Reading. What they've done for their football club this year to raise awareness for a League One football club, you know, and, you know, an old fashioned League One football club that have been around many years. Look, they're still getting 10, 11,000 at home. You know, they, they're mm. taking good. They brought 500 to Fleetwood, 550 or to Fleetwood on a Tuesday night in February, right? You know, and then I think they took decent numbers. I think they took like nearly four figures to Carlisle, you know, which is the best part of, you know, 550 miles, 600 miles, you know, and the support base. Look, they aren't the loudest. And to be fair, at home, they made a bit of a noise to be fair. I was impressed with them, you know, that bit behind the goal. And I know you've not been to, at the Medeski or, you know, whatever they want to yeah. call it these days. For me, for what they've done for that football club this year, to put attention on them and everybody's talking about the, their takeover, to get, you know, questions over Dai Yong, which is hard at League One because it's always about United, it's always about the big six. I, I, I see no reason why they shouldn't be an elite fans just because of the attention they brought to that matter and, you know, how they've got, you know, the League One family caring about them. Yeah, no, I, I I've made it no surprise uh, secret um, 
then I've got a couple of friends that are, are, are Reading fans, and I've been. You're very well connected, aren't you? Um, but well, very well connected. But uh, I, I, I had the, the pleasure of, of going in a couple of away ends of Reading, not this season, but uh, over the years they've been in the championship. I remember going to Bolton on a, on a Tuesday night where they, they drew. I remember going to Derby away in the championship. They won four one. They got to the playoff final that year. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think they've done really well this year in terms of. You know, getting the games uh, not abandoned, but fighting up for what they believe in, and 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 essentially, and it, it looks to be that they're forcing the the owner to sell their club. And you have to remember, nobody wants to go through what Reading fans have been through this year, and they've still travelled in numbers. I thought they were really good at the bank. I thought they brought a lot of atmosphere. I think they brought nearly a thousand. They're a well supported club, mate. And, and if the new owner, whoever it is, whoever it will be, as long as it's not die young, as long as they get them going. I think the Madstad could, could could become a, a real difficult place to go in in League One, especially you know players and, and fans on, on board. Go, so this year, won half the games, Jake. Thirty-four points from a possible sixty. Don't tell me that when I want when we need to go there and win. But for me, Ben, I agree with you. We're going to stick them in elite fans. Next up, Shrewsbury. Um, Ooh, difficult at home when they when it gets going, obviously. They used to have it being a corner next to a away fan, and I think they were better there a few years mm -hmm. ago. Now they've got the safe standing. I don't think it's as good. When they came to Highbury, I thought they were brilliant. You know, the drum was going, and you know they were they were beating along. I think they're similar in the middle for me. I think that that's Shrewsbury mid middle league one. They're happy with that, and I think again fan base summarizes that. Yeah, I, I, I obviously I, I've seen Shrewsbury twice this year. Um, wasn't all enamoured with them at home at their place. And then at the bank, and I, obviously they've come during our, our really good run of form as well. And we, and we played them off the part 3 0, and they, they didn't really make a lot of noise. I'm You're very really tempted. Run. You should mention that. Uh, we, yeah, we, we don't like to mention it that, that much, Ben. But for me, I think Fleet, uh, not Fleetwood, Shrewsbury belong in this category of sorry who, but I think they're maybe at the top end of that. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. We'll, we'll stick them back um, Fleetwood. So, so far, we've got eight teams. Uh, could have come in a taxi, Burton Albion. Sorry who? Shrewsbury, Fleetwood and Cheltenham. They were there, Carlisle, Port Vale and Cambridge. Nobody in decent noise. I think that may change very shortly. And elite fans, Reading Football Club. Uh, Charlton, Jake, where you at? I think that, again, at home, it's good numbers. I don't think it's a great atmosphere. Away, they brought 500 the other day. Good numbers. Mm. No noise, really. Didn't really hear them once. Yeah, the, the problem with an away fan at the Valley, Ben, is that you are miles and miles. It literally looks like they're in a different postcode to, to the away end, doesn't it? When they're all at the top of that um, that two-tiered stand behind the other goal, they, they genuinely look like they're, they're miles away. So you can't really hear the the home atmosphere. They look like they, they're giving it some and they look like they're having a good time. And and through Josh's videos, I think you can tell they're they're pretty vocal, but there's no, there's none of that interaction with the away fans, which really makes an away day for me. Um, and then away from home, they came up on a Tuesday night. They weren't great in numbers. They got played off the park as well, which, which didn't help. But yeah, I, I, I've not been massively impressed. I, I, for me, Ben, I think we're going to have to stick Charlton in, in they were there. Yeah. Agreed. Extra City. Um, when they came to Fleetwood, they got hammered 3 0 and were brilliant. You know, really good. At home, yeah. two tier sand, couldn't hear them. Again, I think they were there. They, they were making a bit of noise, but not too much because you got to compare them. I think they were better overall than Carlisle, better overall than Port Vale. Cambridge were probably better than them. Um, and they're probably a bit better than Cambridge. So I probably put them, they were there, you know, either before Charlton or after Charlton. I, I think Exeter have a lot of potential because that obviously that bank behind the goal is the biggest standing terrace left in the country. Oh, and and I've I've been to Exeter when we played them in the playoffs and they got it really really bouncing that the atmosphere. I couldn't almost hear myself think that night. Um, and, and we went back uh, last season. I, I thought the atmosphere was pretty decent. This year they, they didn't travel great. Lost uh, at the bank. Obviously, because they've come in 2024, we haven't lost yet. But uh, yeah, I, I, I quite like Exeter fans, but I, I, I think they're maybe not decent, but I think they're certainly better than 
um, Port Vale and, and Cambridge, especially this year. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like Exeter. They're a, they're a club that I really like, and I like, like I say, that big bank. I like what they stand for. For me, I'm gonna. I think we should slot them in around here, around they were there. Northampton, I think. Again, mm. at home, they were quite vocal. They won 3-0. Yeah. I'm middle again for me. Yeah, I'm I'm sort of... The only thing about, about um, Northampton is, and they need to get that stand. You know, that you know they've got the main stand where all the fans, the dugout... Yeah, the opposite one where that I was. That, yeah, yeah, that stand that they put you in, because um, you, you could have come in a taxi, would be my guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that stand they need to get that sorted because that's been a big dilemma for them in the last couple of years. Um, I also think all they've got really is that, and it's quite rich coming from a Lincoln fan. Is that is that one corner of that main stand that do a lot of a lot of singing and a lot of noise? Um, I think at Lincoln, I, I, where everyone joins in. Yeah, well, this is it. No, you've got the people right at the other end of that main stand at the other end at the other goal that I I don't think they really get involved. Um, for me, I'm sort of torn between Sorry Who and They Were There. What, what do you think? Sorry Who, I think. Above, uh, probably top of that. At the top of that, I think. Yeah. Bristol Rovers. <sighs> Difficult. <laughs> We've beaten 2 0, and I've always been impressed with the mem atmosphere, but it was flat the last couple of times I've been. If I'm honest with mm-hmm. you. They only brought about 100 on the Tuesday night, which. Again, I'm saying only. You know, they had to nothing play, to play for, though, then, as well. Yeah, they had nothing. Yeah, exactly. I will probably put them in. They were there, but they have when they are on it, they are elite fans. But I can only it, judge them what I've seen. Yeah, it sounds harsh, doesn't it? Maybe I should have worded the the, the, the tears a little bit better. They were there just sounds like, well, they were stood there, but they didn't make a lot of noise. Bristol Rovers, again, and I don't want to bark on about it. They came to us at the weekend and got battered 5 0. The fans weren't great. They were very quiet. Obviously, that's because Lincoln goals were flying in every every five minutes, it seemed. But at the Mem, again, I thought it was pretty flat this year compared to years gone by. I think I've gone to the Mem and gone, wow, they're, they're like a, a class set of fans. Whereas this year, I've thought, well, they're there in numbers, but they've not decided to sing whatsoever. So I think we're going to stick them in the middle category, Ben. Is that fair? Yeah, I agree with that. Wickham um, beat us 4-1 early in the season. And they made a little bit of noise, fair play. to We've seen them at Wembley and I thought they were all right then. Saw them at MK away and made good noise. I think overall, because I've seen Wickham probably 15 times, if I'm honest with you. Mm. I'd probably put Sorry Who probably at the top yeah, of that. At home, made zero atmosphere. You know, yeah. you know, bar the chair, boys. Chair, boy, And that, that is it, really. Yeah, they're not great. They're not known for the home atmosphere. And away from... I always get this impression with Wickham, Ben, that they they come from a very affluent area of the country um, in Wickham. And, and I feel like perhaps the... The town is not as interested in football as you know when you know when you go to a northern town like a like a Fleetwood or a Newcastle or a or a, like a Leeds or a Sheffield mm. and like you speak to the people and you feel like football is complete life in that particular pocket of the mm. country. You go yeah. to Wickham, they're more interested in going for a jam and scone or going, you know, down to play polo or something like that in in, in Bucks. So for me. Yeah, I'm I, I'm not a fan of, of Wickham. I, I thought their home fans were, were pretty poor this year. Away fans, it was right at the start of the season in the summer when you think they might bring a couple of numbers. You know, you tend to travel bigger in the summer, but they didn't and they were quite poor. They did get pummeled though, so that might be why. I agree. Next up, my beloved Wigan Athletic. Um, I'm going to put them in the second category. I think decent. Yeah. I think you know, nine I and a half thousand at home. Look, it's not great. I'm saying it's not great. He's probably top eight, top nine league one for where they've been. Um, but away, they always take good numbers and sing as well. Very loud, very vocal behind the team. And at home, you know, when it gets going, obviously three little birds the other day as well against Bolton. Electric in that mm. far corner, but everybody gets involved as well. Um, everybody has won. I'm going to go for decent noise, Jake. Agree? Yeah, I, I quite like Wigan fans. Obviously, that helps with um, our good mate Baz, but... Yeah, I, I I like my trips to the DW. I think it's uh I think their their fans are good, especially that 
strip that, that stand right near the the electronic board right near the away fans you can you tend to get a bit of jip obviously Wigan yet to come to Central Bank so looking forward to seeing how their away fans were but I can just remember the last time Wigan were, were at Central Bank I thought they were brilliant they sold out they made a lot of noise yes it's because they were they were winning the league that year and they were fantastic but again they're, they're just a really solid set of fans really you know even though it's a, a big rugby town they're still in love with the football and Really, really, really think it's a, a good day out and the fans make it that. So, yeah, decent noise. Late in Orient, I've not got to see the home atmosphere, but when they came to Fleetwood, I was quite impressed with them. I saw them at the mm. um, like the FA Vars when they played Fylde. You know, just in Edinburgh, you know, God rest his soul, rest in peace. I think it was his last game for the football club and, you know, Fylde won that 1-0. You know, Danny Rose scored a free kick and they took about 21,000 and they were brilliant. They were loud as ever. Um, I saw them at Carlisle. And I was so impressed with him watching late in Orient. There was about 400 of them, I'd say. I think four, four, seven, yeah. five or something like that. Or, you know, in the 400s. And they, they made the noise of about 1,000, 1,400. I'm going to put them again in decent noise. I was really impressed with the O's. Mm, yeah, I mean, we play them on Good Friday. So, again, depending on when you put this video out, then we, we play them at home. Uh, soonish, but they sold out Stevenage the weekend just gone, uh, and they look really impressive there. Um, obviously, a lot's gone on between Lincoln and, and Leighton Orient this year, and I thought their fans were, were fantastic in the in, in getting that game to be stopped for Derek. I thought they were brilliant in that yeah. manner. Um, it's little things yeah, like I, that, the, the classic, yeah, I, I, well, yeah, I, I, I can see about Redding and Wigan as well, who stood up and were counted. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, and I've got something about that later to, to plead your case for Lincoln. But yeah, I, I really think Leighton are a, a great, they're a real asset, I think, to to, to League One. Not only are they the only um, London-based team, but also I, I think they travel well. Their home support's yeah. really good. Um, yeah, I, I agree. And, and the nice touches, like like with Derek, etc., cetera, um, and what they try to do for his family, I think we've got to put them up there in, in decent yeah, noise. Agree. Going back, I don't think you will need to plead my case about Lincoln. Don't you worry, son. Blackpool, um, again, for me, um, I'd probably put them at the top of decent noise because when that, okay. that North stand, when he gets going, it's rocking. Yeah. You know, they take good yeah. numbers away from home as well. So like, they took two, 2,900, I think it was, just shy of 3,000 to Wigan, 4,000 to Bolton. You know, they take good, you told out for you. I know these are local games, but take good numbers you know, elsewhere as well and make a bit of noise as well. You know, um, I like the uh, the Kyle Joseph song and the Dembele song. And, uh, you know, again, every time I've been to Bloomfield Road, you know, as a Fleetwood fan, you know, it's always been rocking. And um, especially, you know, you know, since it's been in the North Stand, and also the way they stood up to the Oceans as well. We talk about difficult moments. You know, they did what Reading fans have done, and kind of Reading fans have kind of looked at what Blackpool fans have done, looked up to that, and yeah. done similar. And two good football clubs for me, top of decent noise, Jake. Yeah, I, I keep seeing those TikToks, Ben, of the North Stand. Um, I, I don't know what they're singing, but they're always racing away fans, and it always looks like a a great laugh in there probably because they always oh I know who runs that account they, don't you because worry. when they do the clips of when they score so that it looks bouncing but yeah I, I, I thought my, my trip to Blackpool at the start of this year was really good I like the the fans behind that goal like you said in terms of away fans you mentioned the big followings the likes of, of Bolton and Wigan yeah they're local but you still got to take them um I thought they were decent away from home. I think they brought eight, nine hundred to, to Lincoln in the summer. They got beat convincingly, but I, I, I like Blackpool as a, as, a, as a support base. I think they're they're really loyal. Obviously, you think about what they've gone through as well, like you mentioned, um, and, and they do create good atmosphere. When Bloomfield Road is rocking, Ben, you can imagine that if the Bloomfield Road, if the Blackpool fans got to see the 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 COVID team that, that got promoted. Bloomfield Road would have been one of the last places you would have wanted to go to. Mm. But that would have been absolutely rocking. So I agree, mate. I think we're going to stick them in decent noise. On to the last eight or so, the last third. Stevenage, where are you at with them, Jake? Uh, I am in currently the sorry who category. Yeah, um, I think I, I, I think I think I, I think I agree. I think they weren't great when they came to Fleet. Well, there was a good they travelled okay. It's first ever visit as well. I think you've got to there's always more numbers and again 
I'm talking from a fleet perspective. I was only wanting to put us in the bottom, but Jake's pushed us up. So these these are I know it's hard it's I know it's hard speakers. I'm in control of it, Ben. Ultimately, I decide where they go. Yeah, exactly. And for me, yeah. Sorry, who I thought they were poor when I went to the yeah. Lamex. I didn't really hear them, and you know, a team with ten cup finals to go didn't really amaze me. So um, next up, Lincoln. Elite fans, Jakey boy, you're going to enjoy that. And we've said all along that it's not the number or the size of the football club. I kind of think, well, you look at Lincoln's ground and it's a bit like where Wrexham are at. You're like a smaller version of that, obviously, at the moment. But you pretty much take away the away end, Saturday, three o'clock, you know, forget mm. this current run of form. Illness. Obviously, maybe if you had nothing to play for now, it wouldn't be as full. Uh, but you know, mm. you kind of think from the months of January up to January, you're probably getting 95 percent, 90 to 95 percent full capacity. Um, yeah. it's good number, good noise as well, good limbs as well. When you're you know, you're jumping up and down and everybody's out together, it you know the ground literally shakes. Um, yeah. you no, know, obviously, um, do you have a drum? Yeah, that's why you have a drum. Um, yeah, we have a drum. Obviously, we have the um. The air raid siren as well, which yeah. is Yeah, well, that might get you down because it gives me ear earache. But uh, <laughs> um, I probably oh, heritage. I, 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 put you, I think the only thing that lets you down, I think sometimes your way following at Fleetwood has been not so great. Yeah, we'll stick us there just come. to be sure, just for now. See again. We'll stick. We'll stick us in the top just for now. But also, Ben, I, I just wanted to. I, I'm yeah. putting you in the top. I'm putting you the. But I'm saying, look, I don't think you can be top of that. But you're in the top segment. Yeah, yeah, I, I I agree. I think sometimes our away our away support base isn't great, but we have taken significant numbers most places. I think our average away attendance is eight hundred this year, which is yeah, it's not bad. Pretty, it's good numbers, it's and you're bigger. Day. You're quite a big football club. You you know, and yeah. Like, you think about that main sum. That main sum was all what four and a half thousand, five thousand. Yeah, four and a half. Yeah, yeah, um, and, and it's full. And and also you mentioned about the the late annoyance. Fans obviously Lincoln do quite a lot for that. We for fans of other yeah, clubs like yeah, yeah, yeah. we have the brick outside for for Derek. We also have the day we played Barnsley last year. There was a Barnsley fan that died after the game. Yeah, you showed me that. Also, uh, there was also a commemorative brick uh, for that Barnsley fan. So Lincoln are that's that's also just Lincoln as a club, but they're very classy and mm. the club are run by fans, and and that's a fantastic thing to do. I think our atmosphere at home is mint. We had nine thousand home fans there on. Mm. Um, Saturday against Bristol Rovers, similar numbers expected for Leighton Orient as well. I know we're on a good run, but I, I think our, our fans are class. And um, not on Twitter, they're not, but certainly it, when they're at the ground. I, I, I the only the only way I want them to rank them down because Jake Tong supports them. So can we just bring him down a lot? and then put, bring him up a peg just for just for our favorite so. two? <laughs> Oxford United then, because every time they come to Fleet, would they make good noise? Um, what are you thinking? You can take mm. good numbers as well at home. A bit disappointing. Mm, yeah, I, I, I think I think they're I think they're probably in in a at the top end of they were there. They, they don't travel in great amount of numbers. The home atmosphere is a little bit to be desired, but when it's rocking the Kassam, that that cop behind the goal can be quite a, a force. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm not enamoured by Oxford fans. Obviously, we, we love Wardy, but. I think he'll agree that Oxford as a, as a club have a lot more potential than than what they're showcasing. Um, for me, Ben, I, I think we stick them in. They were there. Yeah, I agree. Um, next up, we're going to Barnsley. Good home fans, to be fair. You know, when they obviously come on, you read and you know, uh, you know that again. A bit like Charlton, they seem a mile away because like you're here in the away, mm. and they're like on the. The same, yeah. say like obviously behind the goal, but on the opposite side in that far yeah. corner, you couldn't get further away. And I do think they make good numbers, not good noise. But obviously, you saw them when you beat them five, five one. Um, not mm. like you like mentioning it. And they'll be come to play. They, they left well, after sixty numbers. minutes, mate. Say again. They left after sixty minutes. Yeah, for me, I'm going to put them in decent noise. I, I really think that they. I probably put them. I, I don't. I'm not ranking. Obviously, I'm not saying we're going to bet them Blackpool, but because it's all the same, I probably put them in there with those three. Really, Jake. Yeah, I, I think uh, Barnsley you can put into to, to two different categories. I think their home fans. I think their home atmosphere is really poor. Um, mm, I, I, I don't, and I think it doesn't help that 
the fact that they're not allowed to stand in their all-seater stadium, I think that's a bit of a joke and that doesn't help the atmosphere. But their away fans, I think, uh, would be in the in the top level. So I think it equally would add it, you know, even itself out for them to be in decent noise. Really top class away fans, but quite poor away uh, home fans. So yeah, I, I think we have to stick them in here somewhere. Next up, Peterborough. I think they were there again. Um, away mm. fans were okay when they came to fight behind the goal. Since they got that seating in the standing segment section, I think it's gone poor. Mm. I'm honest with you, the safe standing. I don't think that's helped a little bit. Still, yeah. they're all right. Nothing great. They sold 18,500 tickets for the um, playoff final, which for a club of their size, I think is remarkable. The numbers have grown. Probably the best support, you know, Darren, Darren McCanty was saying since he's been chairman. Uh, but in terms of noise, numbers are all right. In terms of noise, bring them down a little bit. Yeah, I I, I think Posh, again, I, I, I'd probably put their away fans in decent noise. I mean, it may be because it's a bit more of a local game. They're travelling numbers to Lincoln and travelling atmosphere and like trashing up the city centre, it seems, as well. Um, but Ho at London Road, I think they're really poor. Um, similar to, like you mentioned, with, with Barnsley and Charlton, you know, where you are, when we go away to, to London Road, then we're in that stand behind the goal and you can't, it does feel a fair distance to that that standing terrace. Um but I, I I don't rate Peter fans at all. I I, I think it's if it, if I had my games. choice for the big games, I think they're up for it. But for for the smaller games, I think even when you saw them when you watched the game on Sky, obviously you were live with with Tom. The atmosphere was pretty rubbish, and that was in a a really big playoff contending game. If I had my way, Ben, I'd stick them in. Sorry, who? But I can understand why you'd maybe put them in. They were there just for when they show up in the big moments. Yeah, absolutely so. We've got three big it's boys awful. left. Bolton, elite, elite club, elite fans. For me, 20, that, what, I think they've got 18,500 season ticket holders. I think they sold a fairly nearly 19,000 with the half season tickets as well. Travel away, sell out most away ends, sold 3,000 to that, but make noise as well. For me, remarkable football club. And what they've been through as well and got through, I think for me, you've mm. got to put them in elite fans, mate. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you on Bolton. Sometimes my only pick with the, the the tough sheet, as it's now known, sometimes the atmosphere is not rocking there. Away from home, again, I, I'll probably put them in the, in the top two to have visited the bank this year. Um, I think they're excellent in terms yeah, of vocality. Right. They're, they're, they're always singing. They're travelling numbers, like you say. I, like they, like For example, Ben, they took, what, 1500 to Barnsley on a Tuesday night. I think that's really impressive. Um, yeah, it's just that home that home support sometimes. Yes, they get the numbers in, but I think what happens when you're a big club and sometimes people come in for the first time because you're at the top of the league and they don't quite know the songs and, and, and everything that sometimes takes away from the atmosphere. But yeah, for me, Bolton, great set of fans, great atmosphere. Um, and yeah, they, they thoroughly deserve to be in that top category. Derby County, um, you've got three drums at home. And look, when you need it, look, the home, I kind of think the noise at times has been a bit flat. Again, look, I'm going as a Fleetwood fan and Fleetwood at home is not a big game. But when they're playing like a Link and when they're playing like a, you know, a, a Forest or a Bolton, you know, a big game, I know yeah. they're up for it. But I've got to just yeah. my it. They are a massive club with good numbers, 30,000. You've got to put them in elite fans. But in terms of noise at times... I don't think it reflects 30,000. Look, it was great against Bolton. But overall, I don't think it's up there. But for the, for the numbers that they have and the away from home, they were brilliant. I think I've got to put them in the top tier. Yeah, again, Derby travel really well. And, and at Pride Park, um, I think you've got the whole South stand which sing. And you've also got that section right by the away fans in the East stand that, that, that like making a bit of noise. So when you go as an away fan, Ben, you feel like, you're getting it from from both sides. Certainly, that's how yeah, I felt in, in my trips. I'm also very fortunate to see Pride Park on a, on an East Midlands derby day. Um, sold to the brim, fantastic atmosphere from all four corners of the ground. You like you say this year, Ben. They've travelled really well. Most away games have sold out. Look, and then what did they get at, at Pride Park on the weekend? Thirty two thousand for the, the Bolton yeah. game. Yes, Bolton bought three thousand, but. That's still a magnificent effort. Uh, magnificent effort. From both. So for me, Ben, the, the, yeah, from both. But I think from from a Derby point of view, I think 
Uh, and it, it's the same for this next bunch of fans. I think I think nah. we're going to sit them them in it's, that category. No, as well. no, no. Disagree. I think Portsmouth need their own section, the top Portsmouth section. My beloved yeah. Blues. You know, um, for me, Portsmouth fans. I think they're not just, in my opinion, one of the best in League One. They're one of the best in the football country. You know. The bell is annoying, I'm not going to lie, but, you know, the noisy mate, play at Pompey at home when it's going, wow. And they pushed their team on so much this season. And I'd love to to know of, I reckon they've snapped up 95% of their away allocations this year. Not down, but maybe Burton away on a Tuesday night, you know, those types of games. But he's still taking good numbers. I think they took, like, 1500 to Barnsley on a Tuesday night in October. You know what I mean? It's like, come yeah. on now. You know, remarkable. Um, it really is. Um, great noise. Fratton Park is unbelievable. It's special. Holds a special place in my heart as an opposition fan. Friendly fans as well. Been through a lot. Saved their football club as well. I mean, Reading have done, you know, are doing similar. Bolt have done similar. Blackpool have gone through similar. You know, so Wigan have gone through similar. There's a lot of clubs that have been through it. For me, Portsmouth are a special football club and deserve, in my opinion, to be top of elite fans. Yeah, I think you can you can tell that you've got a large Portsmouth support and audience, Ben. Um, it's nothing yeah, to do I, with I, that. It's nothing to do I, with that. I, 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 the I, respect I have for that football club is remarkable. And I try and teach every... I try and be fair on every club in League One and judge them fairly. And Portsmouth are, are right up there, and deservedly so. You can't tell me that a team that gets 19,000 fans at home sells... It's the same for Bolton, it's the same for Derby. The noise they make, what they've done, 4,000 yeah, people no, in Mark. I, And they were there when they were even struggling as well, mate, in League Two. Yeah, I, I and, completely um, agree. I'm not, I'm not being unbiased for anyone. I don't have any favourites other than Fleetwood, but up John Massino's tricky blues. Yeah, I knew that was coming. But yeah, I, 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 I can only agree. I think Portsmouth are in a stratosphere of their own. When you go to Fratton Park as an away supporter, as me and you have done on, on several occasions, Ben, um, you feel uncomfortable the second you walk in. And that's a, not only the, the due to the place and the fact they're top of the league this year, but it also it's also because of the, the atmosphere that they're able to generate. I mean, for me, Ben... The Fratton End is one of the most iconic stands in the football pyramid within England. Mm -hmm. I think you have to look at Ronaldinho has said that Fratton Park is the best atmosphere that he's played in front of. Countless Premier League legends have, have said something similar. And, you know, we've experienced, Ben, you know, you know when you went to, to Fratton Park and with, you were 3-0 up and you still didn't win the game because of, and you said in your video, it was because of the fans. They, they, they get them over the line. And so many times... You look at this season, Ben. You know, to, to make it more relevant to now, they've they've won a lot of games at Fratton Park because of the supporters. Oh, I think the, the 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 game against the games against Wickham, where they scored in the 90th minute, the game against Bolton. I think they they won because of the, the the supporters and been able to get them over the line. And I, I think you've you've got so many examples of that in the last couple of years. That for me, Fratton Park is is a truly special place to to go and watch football and. You know, we're very uh, jealous that Tom gets to go there nearly every other week and, and experience that. But yeah, they're, they're a, fan, a fantastic fan base. Travel well, like you say. Um, I don't like the fact their fans are all moaning about loyalty points now. Um, but yeah, no, a, a great fan base, traveling numbers, great support at home. I, I don't think you can get, I don't think you'll find any better, um, certainly in this league. So overall, a bit harsh on Burton. I think Fleetwood should be in that. You know, oh, should we move? Should, should we make sure Burton on their own? Ben, look, there you go. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that is fair. Come on, um, everyone's. They've already put the comments in now, mate. They've already bullied me. Yeah. They? Like the good, the good to say. Is, like we, we, we look. We beat them in the playoff final. We, we've come through the leagues together. We will, we'll stay there together. I think that is a fair list. Sorry, who? Northampton, Shrewsbury, Cheltenham, Wickham. And Stevenage just in front. They were there. Carlisle, a bit harsh, maybe extra and Port Vale could easily get into the top section, but again, on bad days. Oxford, Cambridge, Cholton, Bristol, Rovers, and uh, Peterborough all make into that middle section as well. 
And then only nine get into the top two sections. Wigan Athletic, Leighton Orient, Blackpool and Barnley could easily get into elite fans. I think you know, Blackpool and Wigan are more likely overall to push it. Uh, elite fans, Reading, uh, again, for what they've done for their football club. Uh, Lincoln City join them for their immense home supporters. The only downside is their away spot, but the home support, I think, gets them over that line. And things that they've been through as a football club and come through and, you know, the way that they aren't one of the most biggest or most fashionable clubs like the next three, Bolton, Derby, Portsmouth are always going to be there. What do you think down below? Let us know your list. What would you change? I want to see as many comments down there as well. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you haven't already, please like, please subscribe. And I'm actually going to do something a bit different. We're going to go back, right, in time. So you're going to see this at the start of the video as well. I want a light target from you, Jakey Boy. Now, Tom set 240 on the last one, and we, we smashed that. What we're going for mm. today, realistically, don't go too high. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. What are you giving me a smart target? Uh, I think 175. Good 170. That... It's not going to be as high because Golden Boy's not on it. Um, 175, we'll take that. So if you haven't already, please smash a like. We're going to go for 175 likes. Thank you so much for watching. Again, we're on the road to 14,000 subscribers. Go and give Jake a follow on Twitter, Jake underscore Tong 98. And give us a little follow on Teal Up. All the links will be down below. Jake, thank you for joining me, mate. Thank you for having me, Ben. I've, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I hope it doesn't look biased from a, link, a Lincoln point of view. But yeah, no, I've enjoyed it. Thank you, mate. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later. A big thank you.